Fab. Thank you very much. Sorry, I've got a patient just going to theatre that they just had a call about. Um, thank you for giving us the opportunity to come and talk to you today. <clears throat> I'm not Kathleen who's leading the project, Kathleen's not well so I'm covering for her today. Um, we're really excited to talk to you about our care bags that we're going to launch in the emergency department in April. Uh, next slide please, thank you very much. So the background to this is that we know that our ED environments are really tricky for people with learning disabilities and autism. Um, we know this from a range of sources, so we had a consultation in 2019-20 um, led by our autism subgroup and various autism charities across the city so we strongly heard this message from from our patients that these are really difficult environments um, we know that from the data as well we're starting to understand our data a little bit more that people experience different outcomes and there was also a survey across West Yorkshire and Harrogate looking at autistic people's use of emergency departments um, we know that people come to hospital when they're you know they're not at their best obviously they're unwell they're frightened they're scared and they're vulnerable these are the words that they're telling us and we know that because of our environment being so busy so overwhelming people do really struggle with sensory overload next slide please thank you um Thinking about health inequality through the pandemic, we know that, uh, that our patient groups, our patients with learning disabilities and autism have had experienced greater health inequality. Um, and we know that sadly their outcomes, their outcomes have been poorer. Some of the things that we tried to put in before the pandemic, so after the survey, we had a number of recommendations that we'd put into place. Um, we thought we were doing really well and then when COVID came we've had to change things again so for example we'd created a, um, a space in St James's emergency department that was uh, kind of adapted low stimulus much a much better environment but then with patient flow splitting ED into hot and cold we couldn't always take the people to the environment as we'd planned We've, we're starting to look at our data a little bit more about out of hours when my team isn't in place to support people starting to compare those outcomes too. Um, and through the pandemic, I think you've all heard me say lots of times that our admissions have increased hugely. Our referrals went up 500% in a year. Next slide, thank you. So what are we going to do about it? So instead of taking the patient to the adapted environment, we're going to change things around and we're going to try and make a better environment to take to the patient. Um, and we're doing this using an innovation grant from the Leeds Hospitals Charities, which we're really grateful for. Um, and they funded 350 care bags. We'll know to give these care bags to our patients because there are clinical prompts in place so people have got electronic passports or they might have a pass flag for learning disability or autism. Um, once we've identified these patients we're going to give them these bags with, which I'll talk to you a little bit more about what's included and we'll make sure that they've got what they need in place. Thank you. So what's in the bag? We tried to do something that we thought would um, reach as many people as possible and we consulted with our patient reference groups about all of what what you know what we were going to include and um, the bag was designed by one of our patients it's you can't quite see it but it's a lovely little tree with different colours on it um, and in the bag we're going to have easy read information about typical procedures that they might have in ED so routine obs things like that um, we've got things to fidget with which we, we know reduces anxiety for people, uh, squishy balls, items for occupation, um, and then things that we think will help people with the environment. So eye mask and um, really solid ear defenders to try and reduce that stimulus for people. Um, how this fits in with our values. So obviously this means that the patient can adapt their environment and we hope that by taking the adaptations to them, we'll offer them a really good quality of service. Um, we've we've collaborated throughout on this project, talking to our reference groups and our stakeholders across the city. Um, we want people to feel like they're a little bit more in control of their own care. And in the packs, there's also going to be the accessible friends and family test um, and leaflets about where to seek support if they need it so that we can give them that little bit more um, of an idea of what they can do to use their own voice. Um, we know that it's going to be accountable. Kathleen's working hard to, to look at this uh, audit trail and the outcome measures, and I know she's going to bring these them back to this group. Um, we're going to look at doing this at St James's and at the LGI, um, and we're going to offer these bags to everybody with a known diagnosis. There'll be some prompts on the bag to make sure that staff get that right. 
So hopefully we'll be able to measure the impact through the friends and family test and the evaluation forms that are going to be in each bag to start with. We're going to talk to staff beginning, middle and end of project. And um, Kathleen, as I say, is going to come back and talk to you about, about the project once it's up and running. We really hope that we're going to improve the patient experience. Um, we hope that we're going to make staff feel a little bit more confident as well. We've had feedback from some of our staff saying we do struggle out of hours when your team are not here. We want to know a little bit more about what to do and what, what can we do in that moment to support that person. And we're hoping that with these bags, we'll be able to, to measure that. Um, we're hoping that we can improve the patient flow. What we've sometimes seen with our patients is if they can't cope in ED, they just go and then they come back and they go and they come back. And obviously that's not going to get the best outcome for them. So these are all the things that we're looking to measure. So we're going to launch. We're launching towards the end of April. So April is Autism Acceptance Month um, and we've gone for the back end of the month just to fit around kind of Easter and when we think more people will be able to um, access the introduction. Um, so we're going to be based down in ED um, on each site. We're offering workshops and we've spoken to the ED teams about what they wanted. So they wanted a bit about the bags but they also wanted um, training on specific topics, so some about sensory awareness, a bit about mental capacity. So we'll work with them on that. Um, those daily learning bursts are on its kind of timetable to fit in with when ED said that they wanted us to go down. And we're also going to promote the e-learning that we've got in place that's now available to all of our staff across the trust um, for learning disability and for autism. And you're more than welcome to come down and join us during the launch, but we'll be taking lots of photos as well and we'll be able to feed that back to you. Um, any questions? Alison, thank you very much. That's really good to see. You know, every Monday morning at induction, I, I reinforce the importance of how we work with our patients with learning disabilities and autism. And you and the team are doing a, a fabulous job. And this is such a great idea an initiative and it's really good to see how it's connected to the Leeds way. So what I'm going to do is suggest we hold questions in the usual way until we've managed to get through the rest of the report out. But I'm sure there will be some if you can sit tight, Alison, that would be that would be great. But really good stuff and, and well done. Um, so um, next up, I'm delighted to uh, offer congratulations to our fantastic um, Lean for Leaders graduates uh, who are receiving their certificates. And we've got Jackie Armitage, Tim Hunter, Nicola Nicholson, um, Sonsoles Martinez Lopez, and Chris Stothard. And just to say, I've had the particular pleasure of being able to do the Genba walks and seen firsthand the great work these guys have done so i can tell you all this is really well deserved in terms of what's gone on so a huge congratulations to um all five of you and i'm just going to offer the opportunity uh for any of you to offer some reflections or thoughts or comments on your lean for leaders experience that you might want to share here at Report Out. Yeah, hi Julian, I don't mind sharing. Um, I, I work in, in a small team, the PMO department, so it's been quite easy for us all to get together. The, the team's got no clinical responsibilities, um, so it was really good. Everybody was engaged, half the team had already done for Lean for Leaders. Um, we've learnt so much working together and we're so proud of our production board now. Um, I think we've been showcasing it. <laughs> Uh, showing off with it a little bit but yeah it's it's really brought the team together it's been fantastic I've absolutely loved every moment of it um, and it's also helped in my home life as well I think it's made me think about other things I've even rearranged my home <laughs> to make it more lean it's, it's been a great experience I've loved it great thanks very much Jackie I think let me just check the hands I think I think it was Sonsoles, then uh, then Chris, then Nicola. Hi, um, I just wanted to share that I enjoyed the most and loved the first part of the course when we did the reading about the Victoria Mason project and the principles that has really changed my practice is knowing that there are people that have made 
the point of putting the patient at the center of everything we do. So that can be done and we should strive for it. The tools have been fantastic, but uh, what has uh, touched ground with me is the philosophy. So I'm really, really pleased that I did lean for leaders. I think that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Oh, you're on mute, Julian. Oh dear, I was just saying how fantastic that was as well. Sorry about that. That's great. Thank you very much. We're pleased you've done it as well. That's excellent. Chris. Uh, yeah, thanks, Julian. I definitely echo what Sonsales and, and Jacqueline had mentioned there. A little bit daunting at first. Lots to start to understand and get your head around. Um, and some things from the course probably have not really landed. But the things that have have made massive differences, we are very much hot on our production boards as well now, uh, sharing those across our team and actually using them for our end of life care meeting. So we use the um, Trello board to actually go through our meeting um, and daily management as well has been great. So it's given us what can be quite a chaotic start to the morning, has given us all a real good structure. Um, so, yeah, thank you again for the opportunity and very, very proud to be a lean leader. And so are we, Chris. That's great. Brilliant. Great work. Thank you very much. Nicola. Thanks, Julian. I think everything that everybody said so far really resonates with me. I just want to say a big thank you to Jimmy and Sophie and the team who've persevered with me as possibly the longest standing person on the Lean for Leaders programme and really made sure that I have continued and completed it. So a big thank you for you and your perseverance. Brilliant, Nicola. Thank you. Excellent. And finally, Tim. Yeah, thank you, Julian. I just wanted to say that um, I appreciate the opportunity to have done Lean for Leaders um, and echo everything that everybody else has said. Uh, and I think for me personally, the, the Gemba, the concept of the Gemba walk has been, um, whilst incredibly obvious, wasn't obvious until you'd done it and I think that's been incredible as a clinician that's been really useful to be able to kind of step out of clinic and observe and learn some of the idiosyncrasies of the way that we deliver service and how we can improve that and I'm particularly looking forward to being able to utilize some of the skills when we uh, move into our new department uh, later on this year. Great Tim, brilliant, thank you. Really inspiring I found that um, all, all five of you um, working on different projects but united in your learning and commitment dedication to the leads improvement method and I know you'll all be using it from and continue to use it in terms of your own work and um, taking forward all the improvements that I know you're you're hungry to do so that that's excellent well I'm going to now if I may um, oh and just before I bring Jimmy in um, I'm going. To, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Phil if you would MC the Q and A, uh, and um, I just want to sort of congratulate everyone on report out. I'm jumping on a um, a, a very urgent national call on urgent care, uh, so I wanted to thank all of you for that. But I do want. I'm sure we'll have lots of questions and comments from colleagues. So Phil, if you could, uh, if you could. MC that that would be great and um, I think we've got Jimmy and then Jenny so well done everyone and and thank you so much it's been a brilliant report out today and I'll leave you with Phil uh, in Phil's good hands thanks everyone okay thanks thanks Julian um, so um, Jimmy thanks Julian thanks Phil well it, it would be remiss of me not to officially congratulate from my personal uh, perspective everyone who's completed Lean for Leaders on the call today um uh, I, I don't think it matters how long it takes nicola it, it's about what you do with it and uh i think sophie put something in the chat which absolutely reinforces our perspective it's uh yeah we, there's plenty of people who haven't yet got the certificate but are using this stuff day in day out to make things better for their service users and their teams uh um, and you guys have, have got that step to the uh to the certification stage and uh i have been privileged to see a lot of the work that's gone on behind the scenes for many of you uh and, and it you know, as well as doing a, a big jobs that are very busy. Well done. Thank you. Uh, share it. Keep sharing it. Keep sending people 
uh, and helping them use this stuff because it really does make a difference. So that's that bit. And, and I had a question uh, comment for Alison as well, who I'm just going to reinforce has stepped in super late notice to deliver a great presentation on what looks to be a fantastic piece of work. My comment is it struck me about the stakeholder engagement, Alison, with that you know service users at the heart of it staff at the heart of it you're not going to tell ed people about how they're going to use this bag you've gone and asked them what would be helpful and i just really wanted to reiterate that i heard that come through so strongly uh, and i think um that really is uh leads improvement method leads way in, in action whether it was purposeful or not uh it's fantastic to see so thank you good luck with it and if we can help in any way beyond giving you a platform at report out to share the great work then do reach out so that's that's my comments. Thanks, everyone. Great. Thanks, Jimmy. Jenny. I guess mine were a couple of co uh, observations, really. I just what a fabulous report. I um, the innovation in that first report out was just fabulous. I loved that you've sort of Alison been able to turn that on its head, even when it's just so. You sort of look at it and feel as if that what you were going to do is as as COVID's paused or stopped. So brilliant that you've gone, no, we'll find another way. Um, well done you. And also I, I know this is all about um improvement for our patients, but the bit that strikes me every single time somebody reports out, and Chris, you mentioned it in your um in your summary, the bit that turns some of our chaos for our staff into something a little bit more manageable, uh, particularly given what we've been through and what we continue to be challenged by, I think is equally um, of, of importance. So again, just heard that and I consistently hear it when you talk to people that are working with the method. So great report out and congratulations, everybody. Thanks, Jenny. Uh, Tony? Yeah, um, Alison, wonderful, absolutely wonderful. My my advanced diploma is in the education of children with special needs in ordinary schools. It, it came about as in response to the 1983 Education Act, which was concerned with removing segregation in separate facilities and educating children with special needs in ordinary schools. Uh, so. It, what you've just articulated is the most fantastic story of how the COVID restrictions, with all their curses, you were able to turn upside down and make them into a blessing. And the blessing is that you've ended up with an integrated service, whereas you may have well have ended up with a segregated service, taking real people into segregated areas rather than enabling them to function in the real world and that's what it's really all about so i just want to say fantastic the question is as you as you as you introduce all this and try to embed it as standard work um have you got all the support that you need I think we have. I think we've got we've got really enthusiasm from the emergency departments. We met with the matrons last week, the week before, you know, to, to plan out how this is going to go. I think every group that we've taken this to has been overwhelmingly positive and supportive. Um, I think we're hoping that we'll upscale. Um, not everybody comes in via the emergency department. You know, we've we balance our electives under our emergency admissions and I think um, potentially we'll need to support to roll out if all goes to plan and uh, maybe with a couple of amendments depending how we go but certainly for the moment I think you know certainly Kathleen's feeling really well supported yes. That's, that's really great what happens when somebody who is not quite like us comes into our lives is it uh, makes us change our definition of what it is to be human and and therefore it changes what we do in the real world, you know, in former generations, what we did was we took these people and put them into segregated environments, and that isn't the future. So I'm really delighted in what you've done. I just want to say again, just fantastic. You really made my heart sing when I listened to you. 
Thank you. That's a question that comes back to us quite often. You know, should we not have specialist wards for learning disability? Um, and our response to that is always that we want our patients to be in the right specialty. We don't want them to be outlying in a separate area. We need them to be in the right place for the care at the right time. So it's about upskilling people and making those, you know, across the trust, making those environments suitable. Thanks, Tony. Uh, Rob? I was going to ask Alice, how long are 350 bags going to last you? And I guess there's, uh, if if you use them a lot, have you got things in control to stop, you know, bags being half full very quickly or whatever, or need to be reused? Or if you've got not, if they're not used very often, have you got any controls to make sure that ED staff remember them or that they're in a convenient place and not sort of, you know, hidden underneath things? We're working on storage with estates at the moment because um, there's only four in a box so there's quite they're quite big because they've got lots of stuff in them um, but in terms of how they're going out so they're all tagged with prompts on um, we're going to keep a track of who they're going to where they're going and there's the feedback forms that are in each bag um, how quickly will they go I don't know I think people are keen people will want them um, our plan is to evaluate obviously sort of three months, six months. Um, if the bags go really quickly, then we'll, we'll potentially look at changing timescales on that. What we didn't want was for them to go to everybody, which is why they're tagged with real clear prompts about who, who they should go to. Tim? Yeah, thank you, Alison. I just, I just wondered because ophthalmology um, at the moment is not the busiest outpatients that it used to be in terms of volumes because of the of the social distancing which has helped a lot with some of our patients with learning difficulties and autism giving them some space but as we move towards a kind of busier environment I wonder where we could build on what you've done in ED because that sounds a fantastic tool for some of our patients who unfortunately wait maybe longer than we'd like in outpatients to be seen and and uh, and particularly busy outpatients it can be a maybe not quite as intense as ED, but can be an uncomfortable environment. Has, has there been some thought to um, expanding their use in other areas apart from ED? Yeah, we, we wanted to just target one area first and ED is the area that we get the most feedback about. But I think certainly there's a plan to roll out that, you know, it fits in with a wider programme of, of work across the trust to support these patients and you know thinking about environments is something that we do a lot we're involved with planning the environment for the new hospital um, and within that in in the atrium there's going to be a low stim area um, where people can go to wait if they need to so so this is just I guess one of the things that we do um, all our patients now should be or we're, we're aspiring that all our patients will have a health passport saved electronically on their records. And that's the other thing that we can do to support in areas where we don't have the bags yet, looking at their needs and preferences and how best to support them. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Tim, and thanks, Alison. I can't see anybody else's hands up. Actually, one's just come up now. Just uh, I know Tim. I think that's uh, that's my screen being slow. Okay, so um, if we've got no more questions, just again, Alison, thank you for a really inspiring presentation. Thank you particularly for kind of stepping in to to do that. Although um, I know it's not unfamiliar territory, given all the work you've done uh, for us on this, and it's it is absolutely fantastic as people have. Said, and I think we uh, a real exemplar for our, for our caring and compassionate organisation. I think it, it's really exceptional. Um, and again, just a big congratulations to Nicola, Christopher, Sansali, Jackie, and Tim for their lean for leaders. Um, so that's the end of report out. Join us uh, next week for uh, the same time for next week's report out. Thank you very much, everybody.